Hello, my name is Neroy Blevins. Welcome to Mysteries and Histories. Uh, in this episode here, we're going to talk more about the Mary Mormon photo and the gunman inside the shelter number three there. And I'm going to show some more evidence and go over some things and stuff like that so people can fully understand about the, her image that she took. Okay, because people said this as well, you know, how this person could be this tall or whatever, or, you know, how can a gunman take a shot when he's looking out the top window, you know, when his gun's in the lower window and everything else. You know, they keep on coming up with all these different questions. Sorry, I'm going to be a little bit uh, slurish right here because it's been really hot, muggy day for the past two weeks. And uh, we only have three fans and we don't have no central air units or nothing where we live at. And I got to keep one fan on my wife, my oldest son, Leroy. And then one on my other son, Jess, which he's asthmatic. So, you know, we'll get through this because it's like I said, it's a real hot, muggy day out today. And it's been like that for the past week. And it's like, geez, oh, Pete, when's this going to stop? But anyway, we're going to talk about the Mary Mormon photo. Okay. When she took her image, by basing on time frames and timelines, when she captured both gunmen, and what I'm trying to explain to people so they can understand that, you know, they said they can't see him there, but you can actually see him plain as day right here. Okay, one gum in here, one gum in here. Now, what people don't know is when he took his shot from this window here, he raised up, looked out the top window to make sure he made his contact. And the second gunman has come around to take his shot to Governor Conley. So basically, she took these two, uh, when she took her image, she took it in between frames 26 and 40 of the Spruder film. I mean, of the Orville Nix film, I should say. So this is when she took the, this image. She took this image right after he took his shot. Okay. He stands up, you know, looks out the top window. She takes her image. Then he's starting to come around to the side of the shelter to take his shot uh, to, J uh, to Governor Conley. So basically, between the shots of JFK's fatal headshot and the shot to Governor Conley in the back as he was turning off to his left, this image was taken in between them. So, you know, that's why I want to explain as well. Now, a lot of people says they can't see this guy, these gunmen in the image, which they could clearly be seen. This is the reason why I colorize it to bring up more details and show people what these images present for us. And this is what the evidence of these images stuff holds for us. Okay, that's the reason why I colorize the images so we can get more of that detail and stuff like that and see what's going on in the surroundings and stuff. Not only in the Mary Mormon photo, but other images like the sniper's nest and everything else. Because when you look at the original black and white, it's hard to pinpoint where the three bullet casings are, but then you could tell now after I colorized them and everything else. That's why it's very important when you colorize something like this, you have to switch back and forth. Like I'll just do this as an example. Every time I colorize a certain section, like if I color, now when people colorize something, they colorize a whole big section and stuff and everything else. They just keep on colorizing. However, when I do my research and when I colorize images, I cut off like an inch by inch, color it in, then I switch back and forth like so. Make sure nothing was added to it, just the color. Then I go to the next inch by inch, go back and forth, go back and forth, make sure nothing was added to it. That's how I colorize it. Because you have to do that because you got to separate the shadows from the other darkness, like uh, the gunmen uh, and other objects in, uh, in uh, actually in each image in our film. So that's what I do when I colorize the images. I go back and forth, inch by inch, I colorize it. It's like I'll colorize, if you watch my cursor, I'll colorize an inch by inch up here. And what I'll do is I'll go back and forth. Oops, we'll go to that one in a minute. We'll go back and forth. I'll look over this inch here. And I go back over here and look over here. Then I go back and look here. I do this like three or four times. And then I'll move over, colorize this section here. Then I'll go back and forth, back and forth, back and forth three or four times every time I colorize something. Just to make sure nothing was added to it besides the color. Okay. Now, when we see the gum inside the Mary Moore photo, and as I explained, you know, it was taken in between the two shots. Here is... The first shot, which was from the shelter, right here, the window shelter, as you see right here. This is frame 26 of uh, the Orville Nix film. Now, when I line this film up with this Prude film, because I needed to pinpoint, when you see a shot, 
and you have a location, you have a shot, you see a shot, you have to know where the shot may contact with. So when I line up frame 26, it lines up with frame 313 of the Spruder film. And this is based by the position of the people, how the pe people are reacting, and you know, how's the run and everything else, just like as you see right here and everything else. Okay. In the Orville Nix film, it looks like everything's close together, but when you look at the Spruder film, remember we're looking at one side of Elm Street to the other side of Elm Street, and you see there's a big, uh, big distance, big gap in between JFK and this lady right here. But then when we go over to Orville Nix film, okay, frame 26. As you see here, it looks like she's right up on him, but she's really not. There's a big gap in between there, like I said. You're looking at one side to another side. So when I analyze film and stuff and I start lining up, then I pinpoint exactly where these sh shots make contact with stuff like that. Just like when I, like we'll take frame 26 here. All right. To make sure there was a shot being fired there, I zoomed in. Like I always do. I zoom in just to make sure. And as you see here, we can see the gunman's head. We can see the rifle fire. We can see the sparks coming down from the rifle out that's being fired. Okay, and we see that smoke trail right here. So we know this is a shot that's fired in Orville Nick's film. Then when we line it up, we see it lines up with JFK in a fatal headshot. Same thing when we go in frame 40 of the Orville Nick's film. We see another shot being taken by the side of the shelter here. We do a close-up, and as you see, we can see the top of the gunman's head, his forehead, his hairline and stuff, we can see he's firing. We can also tell he's firing from the left because most of the flash is on his left side than it is on his right side. So we know he's firing from the left. Then what we're gonna do is we're gonna line up the angle of the smoke trail. And as you see, it's lined straight up to Governor Conley. And as soon as this bullet impacts in the back of Governor Conley, he falls over into his wife's lap, as we see in a Spruder film, which is frame 330. 330 of the Spruder film, as you see right here, when we line it up, frame 40 of the Orville Nix film lines up with frame 330 of the Spruder film. And we see that bullet impact right here in the back of Governor Conley's back, and then all of a sudden he falls over to his wife's lap. Same thing we do see in the Orville Nix film. So you see, when we analyze films and we look at images and everything else like that, okay, we get more details, okay? You have to pinpoint, it's like when Mary Mormon took her image. We have to pinpoint exactly when she took her image. So we base that on the other films and images that was taken that day. Then when we see the gunman in one location, then we go ahead and look in that same location and other films and other images to see if there's anything else out there that backs up this location. As you see in Orville Nick's film, we see the shots fired, the Mormon photo. We see them with rifles in their hands. The Darnell film, we see him in the side view of the shelter, one of them still aiming it from his left side. And in the Bronson film, we see shots being fired from that same location. So when you have your pinpoint, once you pinpoint your location that you're looking at, more evidence can compel on top of that and keep on adding more and more evidence onto it because you already have marked down your location. Now, what we did when we was there also is, as you see here, we took two different, actually we took a, a few images. These are a couple of them. See how easy it is for a gunman to fire his rifle right out of here. Okay, this is my son, Jesse, and this is my nephew, Timothy. Okay, you see how easy it is for him to be able to take a shot there, and he can actually stood up, he actually stood up and looked out that window as well after he pretended he took his shot. But we also did this way too. Now, the reason why I did it in different positions like this so we can see is my father was a Marine, and my grandfather was in the military too, he's in World War I and stuff, and they show us, because they was, uh, my grandfather was a sniper, and he showed me different positions that he had to do with him and his buddies, how to do when they're uh, shooting over, like, you know, a tall structure or anything else like that, these are the positions, how they stand. This is another reason why when you look at the JFK assassination was a military hit, because of the way they were standing, just like he can lock his legs in here, he can easily take a shot out of here and everything else. Now what I want to do is here, is I want to explain something here. Now people says, oh, this guy, he, the guy has to be 20, 30 feet tall. Okay, we took measurements from this point here to where he took his shot out of this window here was exactly nine feet. Okay, nine feet from here to here. Now remember, the gunman that was inside the shelter, my nephew here, he is uh, six foot. He's six foot. Now remember, the tall tramp was six foot five. 
Okay, so if he was six foot five, he actually would have stooped down this little bit to take the shot, and then he can have a clearly view out of the top window here, which he was six foot five, and he, plus he was a bigger man. But that was nine foot. Now, a lot of people said this was, uh, but before we go into that, we're going to show you the view. Now, remember, these trees were smaller. The trees were down here. If you watch my cursor, the tree was actually down here. So the gunman had plenty of time to look. And this is his view because he shot JFK over in this location here. That's why he's pushed off to his left, as we see in the Spruder film. I mean, yeah, in the Spruder film, excuse me, as we see here. Okay. We see JFK being pushed off to the left. As I point out, this is his view, the gunman's view, when he took this shot. Remember, that again, the tree was smaller, and when JFK was shot, he was being pushed off to his left. So when you're shooting from this location here, you're pushing him off to his left, like this. He's going like this, as we see in the Spruder film. Now, when Governor Conley was shot, which no one's never looked at this view or anything else, but I'm going to show you the view that the gunman had when he took the shot to Governor Conley. Here's the view the gunman had. Remember, Mr. Spruden was over here still. Governor Conley was shot in this location right here. In this location here, that's where the bullet impact into Governor Conley's back, right in this location right here. So when Governor Conley was shot, this is the gunman view that he had when he took that shot to Governor Conley, which you can see he had plenty of time to take aim and take his shot. Excuse me. So you see, now you've seen the gunman's views and stuff like that and their location and everything else. But there's still one other thing that I want to point out as well. As we sit there, people says, well, how come Mr. Setsman and Mr. Spruder didn't hear them when they're just right behind him, like a few feet from behind him? Actually, from where Mr. Spruder was standing and Mr. Setsman was standing to where the gunman's location was, was actually 15 foot 7 inches. That's how far distance that they had between the gunman and them was 15 foot 7 inches. Again, more things that I'm bringing out that people don't know about. That's what I'm talking about. My research and stuff like that, when I went there, I went ahead and made sure and covered every base. And as you see, we got nine foot from here. Okay, we got nine foot from here to here to take a shot's nine feet. And then Mr. Spruder, which would be standing on this wall right here, this retaining wall right here, which I'll zoom in so you can see. Standing right here was Mr. Spruder, Mrs. Setsman, standing right here. They was 15.7 feet, I mean, uh, 15 feet, 0.7 inches away from the gunman inside of shelter number three. And that's from this point here to this point right here, right here. So you see, to me, when I look at this and when I go over this kind of stuff and everything else like that, okay, we have to look at every angle and stuff. Like I said, we always have to look outside that box. So I just want to present some more of this evidence here because, like I said, there's a lot of people questioning about the uh, or Mary Mormon photo and stuff like that. Okay, they ask questions about this and questions about that, even though I answer them in comments or anything else, but then that question keeps on being raised up. So that's the reason why I want to make a video here today and post this and stuff like that. Excuse me, Swiss getting in my eyes. But I just wanted to get uh, this out and stuff so people know this information. So always in the description down below, you're going to find a site where you can order my book, Evidence Conspiracy. The only book you ever need is JFK Assassination. Uh, there's also going to be a site where if you want to make a donation to the GoFundMe account for the documentary on JFK. $30 or more, you get a free copy of the DVD, your name's going to credit and everything else like that. Don't forget to share this video. Don't forget to share this information and other information from my other videos to your friends, family, relatives, on social medias and stuff like that, so they may know this information, plus the other information from my other videos. Thank you, and you have a pleasant, pleasant day. Oh, and don't forget that like button, don't forget to subscribe, don't forget to tell your friends about us. There we go. Thank you, and you all have a pleasant, pleasant day.